All right, all right, all right. So, because I'm a very bored person who does not know what's good for him, let's just do another hour of streaming. We've got nothing else to do this evening, and it seems like fun. So, back into the lean, mean stream machine. I know you're all dying from anticipation. It's so exciting. Ooh, how this viper zips. So we just finished dropping off the band. Let's head back to Seoul and see if we can't uh, figure out something interesting to do. Because I don't believe... Yeah, no active missions. Let's go. Hmm, game audio might be a little bit loud. But it's uh, not too bad. Well, we're going to leave it where it is. If it proves, proves to be a problem. We can always crank it down. Uh, let's see... I don't know if I have a map for the... I, I need a map from the titular system. And soon, very soon, we will have the ship we desire. Although, maybe a pirate star bridge would be a better choice, but we'll figure it out. But for the meantime, we just need some cash. So let's see... Yeah, we'll go to Nurse Secondus and do a quick delivery, because it's only one system out of our way, and that is a small price to pay for uh, the sweet, sweet credits that we need so badly. Is it a space dock? No, it's to the uh, other station in the system. Now, in general, we want to make as many deliveries as we can to the space docks, these things here, because we can increase our reputation with them. It'll remove the difficulty we face currently with Corella, Rimshot, and a couple other systems like Gateway, Alfara, um, where the Federation military and their associated military stations are not too keen on us, and so they don't allow us docking privileges. Make enough deliveries that end up uh, terminating there, and that happens to change. Yeah, this is a fine delivery. We're going to that system. Nothing else is on the way. Achenar. My apologies if I uh, fail to pronounce these correctly due to just how this old game interacts with uh, my capturing software. I've played it in a window, so it's actually quite small. A little bit hard to read. But hey, there are worse things in the world than uh, a little bit of eye strain. Lodestone is like, hmm, four jumps away. Probably not worthwhile. We should probably just head back to Seoul and see if we can't get anything. Oh, never mind. Let's go to Georgia. It's only for 5,000 credits. But hey, it'll give us a chance to visit this Nurse Primus we've heard so much about. And Georgia is... Uh, particularly uneventful planet. I'm pretty sure it's not even featured in any storylines, just here. Ah, here we go. This is what we want. So a UN shipping delivery that awards 100,000 credits. They are somewhat uh, scarce, but they're no harder than any other one. They just have sometimes a tighter time frame. But seeing as, as we mentioned in the last stream, it only takes us one day per jump where the fastest class of ship besides some uh, story-related exceptions, we can do it. We, we're not going to have any issue going from uh, this system to Code Haven. I believe Code Haven's actually uh, this system right here. Yeah, that sounds right. So it's going to be a very quick delivery. There's another Manticore. Let's say hello. The Manticore is pretty cool because you notice these individual segments that make up the Manticore? If you recall, back to the Terrapin ships that we looked at earlier, this is actually a, a standard unit cargo container. And all it's done is it has a, a ring of these cargo containers, um, well, two rings, rather. And if you read the description for the Manticores in the shipyard, uh, which isn't available here, but this, this shows you the uh, one whole standard cargo pod, you can see that they're from a retrofitted um, Pegasus ship which is essentially uh, one of those rings with some thrusters stuck onto it to do freight deliveries. Oh, whoops. This happens when you press escape instead of tilde. Whew. Ooh, narrow thing here. 
got a free trader and a pirate. So a pirate and a pirate. Because free traders are just pirates. Thankfully, the cops have arrived. And we're going to have a showdown between them and the Aurorans. Or Auroran. Just call them Aurorians, but... Now I see that is blatantly incorrect. Let's try to get greedy and get in here and, and just take shit that's not ours. Ho ho. Ah. Ooh, I'm nice to get a fed, uh, fed viper for free. Alright, let's try to get uh, Firebird. It's not an upgrade, but it would be very silly all the same. Firebirds are terrible. Why am I doing this? Nope. And, thankfully, it does not seem that our ridiculous antics have pissed anyone off. So let's continue with them. There is a phoenix down here. I think I'll take a crack at that one, too. They're like a, a heavy viper for their wards. Oh, no, they beat me to it. That's something that the, uh, the ships do. If they disable a ship of an opposing faction, they'll always go to destroy it. Um, Federation and Aurorans especially will just destroy disabled ships they find. They don't care if you're currently trying to board them. They don't care if uh, you're allied to them. Oh, God. That that could have gone better. We're going to get so stolen from. I'm doing this because I believe it's actually going to end up being cheaper than... Um, fine. Than allowing them to pillage me, just because usually it's pretty brutal when they do. And hey, we got 100,000 coming our way. What's a little pirate tax? Thank you. Alright, the Code Haven's actually... Or was that? That was Code Haven. Okay, we're going back to the Sandown system. So be it. And one kind of wrinkle in the whole 100,000 uh, credit reward missions is there is always a pirate ship waiting for you at the destination. So we're going to actually go and buy something from the Outfitter I should have got earlier, which is an Afterburner. We can't fit it. <laughs> Sell this ridiculous solar panel. Pff, who needs it? Uh, yeah, just get the Afterburner, because we've got to outmaneuver. And we can actually probably afford to sell one Light Blaster, rebuy that solar panel, because otherwise I'm going to forget I don't have it and get stranded. All right, so now we can hold down Z and zip even faster, because... Everyone's complaining about the Viper is just just not fast enough. It needs to be faster. Just faster Vipers. And, uh, yeah. Zip. There's the pirate. We got... Ooh, there's actually two of them. Well, they're gonna be a uh, piece of cake. Oh, actually, they just... I assumed the fed gunboat was gonna take care of them, but it's actually a UN ship. Huh. Alright, we gotta outmaneuver them. Which is fine, because now we are the zippiest pilot in the galaxy. We can probably actually take this particular Viper. It's a, Oh, wait, no, we can't. It's Beam Variant. See that uh, uh, kind of subtitle under Pirate Viper? It says Beam Variant. That is the model of the ship's make. And unlike us, who just get uh, three lousy light blasters, the Beam Variant, I think, gets either a... Thunderhead Lance, or oh, for Pete's sake, or a Tractor Beam. I don't think it's a Tractor Beam on those, but the beam, beam variants of other ships like the Pirate Valkyrie do get Tractor Beams. Sorry, Ion Cannons. But hey, no matter. So, we landed on the wrong planet, which means we gotta do this little, little dance all over again. That's fine. If there's one thing the Viper does well, it's maneuvering. Gonna run the blockade. Nicely done. Well, bam. 100,000 credits. Thank you. Oh, look at delivery to Earth. How nice. So. So, so, so. Let's do another shipyards. Or... Sorry, UN Shipping Company Delivery. Uh, Las Vegas to Title. I'm not sure I like that one. Maybe we'll just go back to Seoul. We don't want to waste time doing too many uh, 
low paying missions because you know it's not particularly interesting for me it's not particularly interesting for you we can make money uh, doing equipment runs or I should say freight runs instead if we wanted that kind of paltry sums whereas we're kind of in a light I hesitate to say fighter just because uh, vipers are notoriously kind of uh, expendable fighters but fighters all the same so it would be nice to instead actually do some combat missions there is a bounty hunter guild that we might be able to affiliate ourselves with if we manage to get a decent ship and distinguish ourselves in combat oh also in case you didn't catch it there uh, those systems, which previously were unfriendly to us because they had Federation military bases in them, are now friendly. Turns out everyone likes USPS. And completing missions for them uh, just makes the government uh, of the system you are completing them in like you better. It's a good way to maintain a relatively low profile when doing some pretty spicy missions. But we'll get more into that later. Should we go back to Georgia for 1500? Why not? We're on the way back there anyway. It's only one jump away. From Seoul, that is. I had just Nurse Primus. Nurse Secondus. Is there a Nurse Thirdus? I don't believe so. I've played enough of this game, I should know, but I'm pretty sure the Latin. After Primus, isn't Secondus? Hmm. I guess primary, secondary, tertiary, but it just sounds wrong. It just sounds so wrong. Secondus. But then again, Latin things often sound wrong. Alright, midnight train to Georgia. After I said all those things about Georgia being uninteresting, we've been here twice in the last uh, last two missions. Can't take that one, we're just not big enough. So here are the things that the Manticore is retrofitted uh, from two of. So it's two of these rings stapled together. Why it needs two of those rings to make its precious little ion cannon, I couldn't tell you. Nothing interesting here, nothing in the bar. But hey. Space Freight is a lonely business, and uh, bar is a small comfort, apparently. At least that's what I can gather from the fact that that's where the bulk of the missions come from. I think the uh, the universe here needs some sort of space AA. Alright, either way, let's go back to Earth. I keep returning to Earth just because that's where a lot of the, uh, the Federation kind of mini storylines kick off from. We can start angling in on a major storyline, but uh, we're still pretty early on, and I'd like to be in something other than a Viper to do that, just because Vipers are pretty squishy, and the uh, story missions, so to speak, often require a little bit more uh, muscle than the things we've been doing thus far. So if we keep the Viper, I'm going to have to play exceptionally well, which is, well, big if. Oh boy. Ah, uh, excellent. I sent scraps to pick up. It's always the nice thing about pirate fights is they tend to leave behind things. They don't clean up very well after themselves. But alas, once again we've been thwarted. You can actually increase that capture chance by uh, hiring marines and you do that from of course the outfitter they're treated as a um, ship upgrade their one-time cost is not like a ongoing fee for them but they increase your capture rate which can be nice if you're trying to angle for one of those special ship upgrades i talked about earlier You can use the number keys to select the various planets in the system. It's just a nice way to tab through. Pressing L will just select the closest. 
a nice little shorthand for it. You can end up doing uh, some things pretty quickly if you just uh, get familiar with the keys. So let's see, go to Port Kane, deliver it to Snowmelt. That's actually not terrible, because Snowmelt's here, I believe. Snowmelt's on the... Yeah, okay, fine. It's a really lousy paying uh, UN shipping company contract, but for lack of anything else to do, let's do it. Let's, let's have a whack at it. <laughs> jump, jump, jump. There's nothing of interest out here except for another special named Therapin. Terrapin. Um, what's interesting is usually these unique names are, are not something you see often, except for some reason Terrapins seem to have a much uh, higher frequency of occurrence than any other ship type besides the Persona ships for the uh, Atmos developers that we talked about earlier. This will work. So one thing you can do if you're very familiar with the planets and the systems is we can pick up a UN shipping delivery that actually starts from the other planet in the system we're going to deliver this one to. And they want to deliver to the Achenar system. All right, yeah, that's that's reasonable. We'll do that one. Can we keep chaining together? Have something start from the Achenar system? That'd be nice. Mm, seems like that's not gonna be the case this time. But that's fine. So the system that we're going to actually is one of the better places to do asteroid mining, which is one of those uh, alternative means of making money you can pursue. You see this asteroid with kind of like a um, caramelized side to it. I just want to take a blowtorch to it. This is a orcutaining asteroid, and if you have an asteroid mining laser, which I can show you next time we get to an outfitter, an asteroid scoop, you can destroy it. Uh, I'm not going to fully destroy this one, but you can see that they're, they are indeed damageable objects, and if you do enough damage, they'll eventually split apart. Mining lasers do increase damage to them. Um, but the releases, yeah, there we go. See these tiny little balls? Those are actually uh, ore cargo, and you can scoop them up and sell them. All right, so I'm going to enter slow mode. By the way, slow, slow mode and fast mode are just caps lock on and off. Caps lock on is, strictly speaking, the 2x mode, um, but it's, it's just, in my opinion, normal mode. Everything else is too slow. Ugh. Oh, never mind. Looks like the, uh, yeah, this association of free traders, Manticore, is going to take care of them for us. And uh, usually, they don't like to share. Yeah, he's not going to share. By share, I mean, uh, let me snipe his disable there. So we know that we're destined for the Akinar system, but as promised, uh, I can't show you the asteroid scoop, because they don't sell it at Snowmelt. Maybe they sell it on Gem, which is where we pick up our next mission. Click, click, click goes the keyboard. Alrighty. Unfortunately, Gem seems to not have an outfitter. Oh well. What do they take in uh, goods? Unsurprisingly, their cost of opals, which is the rare thing you get from uh, asteroids, is low. So we find somebody that sells it for high. We may have a trade route cooking, which would be nice. I have a couple of amusing trade routes stored up in the old noggin, one of which sells rocket-powered skateboards. I'm not kidding. They had a lot of fun with the so-called junks, which are uh, kind of the slang for those special um, trade items called junks. And some of them are very silly. Like rocket powered skateboards. Alright, so we have another 50,000 one. Not quite as good as the 1,000 one, but hey, we are getting, we are, we are zeroing in here on, uh, on the, sh on the, our new ship. Although it looks like we're gonna get the chance to, oh, you bloody fool. You could have had him. You could have had him. By you could have had him, I mean, I, you could have done the hard work and I could have sniped him. Alright. Is this Fed gonna do dirty work? He's gonna 
He's gonna destroy him because he's a Federation. But um, maybe, just maybe, he's, he's weak enough that he won't have time to destroy him until ah, dress. All right. Well, we tried. We gave it the old old college try. Let's go do our delivery. Hey, back to the same system from before. I can't complain. I'm pretty happy with that. We didn't get disabled or destroyed. I call that a win. As you saw there, you'll occasionally see uh, drifting derelicts. And those are one of two things. They could either be a stranded captain, which is a random event, uh, where they'll ask you to deliver them to some random system. The reward is 75,000 credits. So it can go far in jump-starting a, a new ship purchase. Or it can be a pirate ambush, in which case you'll try to board the ship. It will uh, cause a bunch of pirates to jump into the system. And then good luck to you. But that is not the case. Uh, or rather, we don't know if it's the case or not because I chose not to pursue it. That's fine. We're having fun anyway. So which of the two plants do we want? Uh, South Manchester... Cornwall. Okay. So there's uh, probably going to be a pirate here. Oh, but good, we have a Velos. So this little guy right here is a Velos dart. It is the uh, most basic Velos craft. The Velos... Uh, yeah, are kind of a, hmm, how to put it, telekinetically gifted humans, although they're kind of an offshoot of humans. But these ships of theirs are a telekinetic manifestation of um, their will, and so you can't actually board them, and they have very powerful weapons. But their plot line is interesting, um... There's an associated player plotline for them, and we might end up doing it. I find it to be kind of confusing if you're uh, not familiar with kind of the, the atmosphere of the game to start with. And so it's kind of unfortunate that I, I find that's often the one people will stumble into first. And if we happen to do so... I think it'll be apparent why. All right, let's go chill out with this association manticore as he sluggishly tries to make his way to the corner of the system. No, leave him. Okay, bye. Manticores being heavy, um, heavy warships, the pirates are very slow, but not as slow as the pirate carrier, which we might see uh, later when we start actually uh, trying to counter raid some pirates for. That, that fat loot, the, the Skrilla Flash, as our band associate Sly whatever would say. I want to say like Sly Skyler, but he is not in fact the uh, female lead of Breaking Bad. Hmm. Sly Salone. Salone. Sylvester Salone? I don't know. Alright, another successful delivery. Wow, we're just, we're just raking it in here. Uh, we headed to Syracuse in the Galvin system. Not what I'd call on our way. Yeah, you can use the arrow keys to move around the map. It is not the best way to do it, and should only be pursued if you're like me and don't want to take your hands off the keyboard to go touch the mouse. Why? Well, we don't need mouse to sort of work out when we just don't. We can just do everything with the keyboard. There's a, uh, there's a shortcut for everything. Well, let's go back to Seoul. I've got some food, which I believe sells for at least medium there. Because everything with medical equipment seems to. And if we're going back anyway without a mission, might as well do some freight, even if it's just 15 tons worth. Medium. I'll take it. Hmm. <laughs> a bargain basement price on a Valkyrie now. It's it's just worse than the standard Valkyrie, so we're not going to pursue it. There's the asteroid miner. This specializes in taking down those asteroids. I think it kind of looks like a uh, crab or something. We're not interested right now, because trust me, 
It sounds exciting, or maybe it doesn't. It isn't. Or you could, you could take the positive approach and say, oh yes, it's very zen. You know, you just you fly around, you shoot asteroids. That's that's it. And so I'm going to uh, to not do that because I don't think people would uh, very much like it. And I don't think I would very much like it. I think uh, I, I've done my fair share of that just to get a feel for it, and I don't particularly feel the inclination to do it now. So back to, oh my dear lord, Polaris ship. So astute among you who actually read the, the intro slides when we first started up know that the Polaris are the people over to the east of the Federation, and they have quite powerful ships, and they do not like interacting with foreigners. And so they're not going to talk to us, and they're going to fight the Federation at every every juncture. Um, so that one little little striker managed to get a Federation carrier, the heaviest Federation ship in the game, down to 44% shields. Not bad. Imagine two of them. Um, also, nice nice little flavor bit is the UFS Razorback. They all have... I assume it stands for United Federation Ship, maybe, I don't know. Greetings from the UFS Razorback, the newest and latest capital ship to enter Federation service. Just It's just those little things, those little, little bits of polish that make the game so immersive, so satisfying. Did I already buy a map here? No, I didn't. Let's get a map. These are the marine platoons, which increase your capture chance. We currently can't fit any, and so whatever. Mining laser. Asteroid scoop, as promised. Alrighty. Um, none of these are particularly close besides snow melt. Luckily, we have two things going to that system. Fmalhut. Fmalhut. Sounds almost German. Another UN ship. I tell you, the USPS is everywhere. Nothing interesting there. I know I'm going a bit quickly, but trust me, when you've seen one mission BBS, you've seen them all. Hmm. <laughs> we could go to the Ratharian system. This is known as kind of one of the two main outfitting systems, and so it's where you're going to get the bulk of the hard-to-find upgrades for your ship. But I'm hesitant, because I don't really want to commit to upgrading the Viper. Because I think we're, we're getting close to our goal of, what was it, uh, 450,000 credits, where we, then we can just ditch it and get one of those, those sweet, sweet pirate Valks. So I think we're going to wait and, and hold off and uh, get that pirate Valkyrie. Hmm. Alternatively, a star bridge is always nice. It's kind of like it's just it's just standard, reliable, fast. It's a uh, I I would call it a, a medium warship. Although I think they actually make the claim somewhere that it's a heavy warship, to which I don't agree. Hmm. Oh well. But it requires licensing. The nice thing about the pirate variants is they are more heavily armored and require no licensing. Which, hey, it's very much on theme. Oh, I suppose we should check out the Leviathan. So the Therapin is one of these little standard uh, cargo units. The Pegasus is one ring, and then we have the Leviathan, which is five rings of it. This is one of the, if not... Okay, it is, it is the largest Federation available shipping um, ship, cargo ship. It has a capacity of, I think, 5,000 tons, and you can do some really crazy stuff with these. You can, for example, strip out all of its cargo room using cargo-to-mass exchanges, trick it out with tons of weapons, and make a very slow uh, but effective carrier ship, if you feel particularly silly and so inclined to do so. I've done that once. Um, I'm not sure I'd do it again just because watch how slow he moves it's, it's it's too slow it's just so slow it's good don't get me wrong it's uh it can be very effective 
but I'm just not a fan of the speed. Also, uh, it takes like three to four days per jump when you have a Leviathan, and so you can't do those really fast uh, United or UN shipping company deliveries. It's just you'll you'll run out of time unless you have access to the Hypergate system, which, if we get the right uh, right mission hooks, we'll eventually be able to use those Hypergates which uh, are kind of like multi-jumps. They can jump from one hypergate to adjacent hypergates. And they do it instantaneously. It doesn't even take one day. Just, just bam, done. So it's, it's very much worthwhile pursuing it. All right. So here's one of those drifting derelicts we talked about. We match velocities with a derelict ship and dock with it. Passing through the airlock, you are surprised to encounter the surviving crew of the vessel, who are overjoyed at their rescue. I'd imagine. Thank you, Captain, says their captain. But listen to me. I am the captain now. Hmm. Regrettably, this ship is beyond repair. Mm, debatable. If you'd be so good as to transport us to Space Dock 1, however, I have enough savings to reward you for this rescue. Can you give us a lift? Of course we can, because you pay a lot. 75k is nothing to sneeze at. And that will more than put us over the amount we need for the Pirate Valk, thus uh, securing us a ship that can actually take a beating. And we can go hunt pirates. Hunting pirates is a entertaining and worthwhile pursuit. Because just as the pirates can board us, take our stuff, we can board them and take theirs. And if you take down one of those manticores that we've been eyeballing, uh, they have a, a pretty hefty sum of cash. I believe they have, on, on average, uh, 80,000 credits on the low end. And so, a couple of those, and you can really trick out your ship. Alright, alright, alright. Take that delivery to Viking, because we're going there anyway. We don't need any of this stuff, but it's always fun to look. Uh, nothing of interest here, and away we go. Let's get out of the way as fast as possible because you don't want to be caught between a firefight between the Federation and the Aurorans. Even though we're friendly to both, uh, friendly fire is always turned on. What's interesting is some of the systems as you saw there have like decreased visibility and you can buy sensors. Uh, let me see if I can find the civilian sensor available to us. Um, I can't, I don't see it here. Strictly speaking, it's built as a sensor upgrade, but what it does is it makes the minimap function better in those environments, because if you don't, it will flake out. You also get an IDA frigate, which might be nice. Um, they're kind of like a mix between a cargo ship and a freighter. But I think we should follow our, our original inclination, grab a pirate Valkyrie, and go off in search of a spicy, tasty adventure. Alright, that, that marauder kind of had no sense uh, anywhere in his body. I admire his gusto, taking on that many ships at once, but I do not want to be in his position. Ah, here is the other heavy uh, pirate ship, the Pirate Carrier. It is quite a beast. Comes with four quad light blaster turrets, four 150mm fixed railguns, one EMP tor torpedo tube, plus four ammo, which are illegal, but are pretty pretty great, and four pirate vipers. This is the non-carrier um, version of the pirate carrier. There's one that has, I believe, two pirate viper bays, a thunderhead bay, and it's just, it's just insane, if you like that kind of thing. Personally, I find using minions to be, um, eh, it's okay. It's, it's not, it's, it's, it's easy. Let's put it that way. Yeah, it makes things easy and make it too easy. And it ceases to be interesting. So here's a sensor upgrade. This is the pirate version. Anytime you see Owen Greylock, or I believe 
Yeah, gray shoulders. That's the pirate uh, family that kind of controls things. And they are the ones that create the pirate upgrades. So there's also the pirate jammer, which if I take off and reland, it refreshes what's available in the outfitter. But I still don't see it. Uh, that's one of the Olaf Gray Shoulders things as well. But here we go. This is what we came for, the pirate Valkyrie. Very nice uh, image of it destroying another pirate Valkyrie. We're going to strip it of everything it has, but we're still going to want to buy it. And as usual, the Lean Mean Stream Machine. I don't know why I'm naming these uh, this, but I did once name a whole bunch of them after flatbed trucks, so... <laughs> Very nice brain. The lean mean stream this. Alright, there we go. We're moving up in the world. It's happening. Just strip out all the junk. Um, funnily enough, there is a system you can go to which just serves to allow you to sell things that are not usually available in other outfitters because they only generally buy things that they themselves sell. So you can kind of wind up in a weird situation where you, you have things that aren't sold commonly, and so they're very hard to get rid of. And so you take a, a jaunt over to um, a system that we're going to visit, and it allows you to you dump that stuff. You don't, you don't need it. All right. So we do still need to get some more money because we've sold all of our equipment. We've bought the necessary things, but we're kind of um, not equipped to handle pirates just yet. So I think we're going to want to head to one of these places, if either of them are nearby. Neither of them are. Because we need to make some, some Skrilla, some Flash, some Moolah. Here's our Pirate Viking. I thought I sold that. Okay, we do have to go to the Sell Everything port, with is, which is in the system that we've made several trips to already. Um, Archer, hmm. Archinar, I think. The thing about playing this game for years and years, I've never had any reason to like read out the names, so I can't say I'm uh, well versed in how they're all pronounced. I'm beginning to realize that some of them are just jokes, uh, which Matt, uh, ooh, what's his last name? Ah, we'll run into him. He has a persona that floats around space, but he he admitted that a lot of the systems and planet names are like cheesy references or jokes that he. Didn't think anyone would get, but uh, suffice to say, as the internet has become more interconnected, it's easier and easier to find people who have gone through and compiled all the lame jokes that I've uh, made into Eevee Nova, and it turns out there's quite a few of them. Adds character. Alright, Vector Thrust. This increases our turn rate, and look, look, right here. Owen Greylock. Pirate Upgrade. You may think that, wow, this guy really likes pirates. Nah, not really. It just happens that the good upgrades for combat come from pirates. That's just the way it is. Wow, that was overkill. I think he dispatched his entire uh, bay to go fight one viper. I'm going to go with uh, not worth it. I suppose I should make a clarification, though. There are good military upgrades available for almost every faction. The advantage of the pirate one, though, is you don't need to be in the pirate storyline to buy them. That's the big thing. So we can get pretty well equipped before we even uh, delve down one of the storylines. Gotta go to Cirrus Prime. And we beat the pursuing ships here, so we don't have to worry about being blown out of the sky, because we actually don't have any weapons on us. I have stripped them all off. Gotta make some more Flash. Gotta make some more Skrilla. And buy map, of course. So, in an effort to get a little bit more Skrilla, let's go back to the Soul system. We have a couple options. We could do some cargo runs, which I'm currently thinking is a good bet. Or we could keep doing mission BBS stuff, which I don't know about you, uh, I think doing cargo runs might be a little bit more fun. So, here's how the, um, oh, what do you call it, 
escort system works. You have options for escorts, and they have a hiring price, but also a daily price. But every day, you pay them a certain uh, amount, of, amount of credits. Thankfully, though, it goes off of how fast your ship is able to travel hyperspace and not how fast they are. Otherwise, things like Therapins would be insanely expensive because they're so slow. You'd be in hyperspace for three days and have to pay them three times their daily expense rate, which would just be ridiculous. But anyway, so let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. This is a cut rate one. It's used, but that might mean that it is exactly what we're looking for because um, we're not flush with cash and we want to have enough money left over to buy cargo wherever we end up going. But I think the thing to do is buy cargo drones. They're kind of the the general solution to I want more cargo room. Each of them provides you with 10 extra tons and they are dirt cheap. They are so, so cheap. Let's get a whole little fleet of them. Look at that. They're adorable. They're so cute. You'll see other uh, people flying around with cargo drones. Cargo drones are unique in that, um, say almost unique, in that they are not a ship that you can buy. They have a crew size of zero because they're just little uh, program drones to follow you around. See, it's, it's just, you know, one of those things. All right. Wrong planet. But I promise and I will deliver. We are doing the extreme trademark rocket board trade route. 80 tons of rocket boards, please. Whew. Gonna make our fortune. And cause some serious bodily injury to overbuys these. So this is an example of a junk run because we are taking a quote-unquote junk, which is a, oh, this, this is the Pirate Valkyrie we want, class four. It's got tractor beam. Oh, I'd love to kill that, but uh, we can't. I gotta make the Hank Hill noises. Oh, propane. Either way. So, sells for high here. Just quickly sell those off. And I believe we want to buy metal here. I don't know if we actually made any profit off of that. I should have written this down, but I didn't. Live and learn. We may have to default to another uh, trade route, and if that's the case, so be it. There are a couple of not awful ones. Um, surprisingly, one of the ones that is fairly decent is from the tutorial, but I can't say it's all that interesting. Is this the... Okay, we wanted to buy industrial, or maybe it was equipment. I don't remember, truth be told. Was it this planet they were trying to land on? Or... No, that's for the holy symbols. I'm trying to remember where all the junks get sold is half the battle sometimes. I think we actually wanted industrial. Now we have to find a place to unload our scrap metal. Hmm. Well, we know where to sell equipment. Gee, I don't want to just jettison this metal, but it's burning a hole in our cargo bay. Because every day we fly around looking for a buyer is a day that we have to pay these cargo drones. And they're they're not expensive. I, they're costing us like 200 bucks per, per day. But they're not nothing. So I am going to jettison cargo. Seems like a waste. Don't care. Ooh, look at that. Enterprising uh, people with asteroid scoops can actually vacuum that up. Alright, so if we remember, 100,090. We'll see if we make any profit. Let's see here. The moment of reckoning is at hand. I hope we're doing enough volume. We are. We have made 15,000 credits. So right there, it's that one little route, we have made 
equivalent to the best 10 or the second best 10 cargo space um, mission that we would do as a shuttle. And this then allows us to buy industrial, go back to Sandown, to Kaniki, Kaniki, and sell the industrial for high, go back to the, um, not Sandown system, Tau Kitai, uh, get more rocket boards, and this is the route. This is what we do. We do this until we have enough money to um, hire some Therapins instead of the cargo drones. Oof, only makes 4,000 on that one. Did I go to the wrong place? Oh, it's high for equipment. Hmm. Perhaps I did. We had industrial, not equipment. Do you want industrial? Hmm. <laughs> Let's find out. I'm willing to pay the price. I'm willing to pay that, that 200 credits to go see if these guys like industrial any more than the other ones. Industrial high. Okay. Yep. 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 I tell you. It's all coming back to me. I hope. Perhaps. Maybe. I f f couldn't tell you. Ah. Uh, the standard 4x grind of cargo hauling. Now, it's almost more fun to not know any uh, pre-established routes, because then you get to go exploring space, picking up a whole lot of junk that's very hard to sell, and uh, hoping for the best. Which doesn't sound like fun, but it is. So we want industrial. We're making money. Not a lot of money, but money. And I believe we're going to Kismet. Now, Kismet sells, um, or Kaniki in Kismet, sells a uh, chlorine gas, chlorine gas, I should know this, um, and chloride gas. Sorry, it's hard to see as I, as I mentioned previously, I don't think that that's what that says. But uh, we don't have any systems off the top of my head that I know that buy it. There are systems that buy it for high, but the one I know is in the Auroran Empire, so that's not really a viable alternative. I'm not going down to Auroran space just to unload uh, some gas. A big ball of gas! No points for knowing what movie that's from. Too easy. Too much of a cultural uh, touchstone. Ah, uh, the rocket board route. I know it well. Oh god, don't destroy my cargo drones. I've paid in advance. Got a little bit of friendly uh, friendly fire there. Usually it doesn't make you immune. But I'd be lying if I said I knew uh, exactly how the combat in this determines that sort of thing. Let's let one of you guys go. And we're actually going to expand. We're going to get a Therapin and... Let's see, cargo 125 as opposed to the used one, which is still 125, so why would I ever hire you? Hmm. So there you go. I guess we're doing that. Gotta make sure we have enough money to pay everyone, but that should not be an issue. If you just hold down J, by the way, it makes the jumps as soon as it's able. And because we have, I believe, six meters of fuel, or six units of fuel, we can just hold it down and let go. We are paying, like, 2300 uh, in daily fees now, but I believe we'll still make our profit. Yeah, 146. I believe that's better than when we started. Should break out my trade ledger. A marauder. If only I still had weapons. I don't. I don't know who was attacking us there, but I'm not sticking around to find out. Oh no, I don't want this. I landed on the wrong planet. I've gotta pay that extra daily fee now. 
All right, buy this. Buy low, sell high. Any questions? Rocket boards are admittedly pretty silly. But they fetch a pretty penny. Although, truth be told, I think it's the industrial portion of this arm that makes more money than the, um, the rocket boards. The rocket boards are really just having something to bring back. Give me another one of these. Another one. Because you got to have something to haul back, otherwise it's dead space. We wouldn't want that. So, everyone remember... 4,000, uh, or 49,563. We'll just call it 49,000 between friends. Let's see how much we make. Yeah. I think that's probably worth it. Um, if only I had a buyer for the gas. We should check metal prices. I think I've I've puzzled out this trade route before, so I shouldn't spend too much time trying to optimize it, because um, I don't think it gets any better. But it's worth a shot. There is another one that I know. Oh, stop landing on this planet, brain. It's the wrong one. That involves going back from back and forth from New Ireland, shipping medical supplies and I believe food, which we'll give that one a try uh, on our next run around here. Simply because adds variety, and I believe it might make more money than the rocket boards. I don't know if I've actually checked before. So to Earth. We're going from Earth to Tutha. Tautha? I don't know. Now, you know how I said earlier that everyone in this uh, entire universe seems to be Irish, or at least a good 80%? We're going to be going back and forth to New Ireland. Just saying. It's pretty Irish. Nothing wrong with being Irish, by the way. Just an observation. Alright, so if this doesn't work, it's going to bankrupt us, but hey, now we're really trading. This is what I call pod racing, etc, etc. Those dank, dank prequel memes. And the Irish even have their own faction called the Wild Geese, who are currently getting uh, caught in the middle of a dogfight with. So all of that, I believe we buy food? Hmm. This food sells for medium, but I think it's actually the luxury goods we want. But I am not going to commit um, money to that until I know. I'm sorry. How did that happen? How did how did I trip your uh, quote unquote alarm? I am a good law abiding citizen just trying to ship my freight. I have no illegal property. I don't even have any weapons. I don't believe I'm violating any licenses. Because if you have illegal equipment, they will actually bust you for it. Alright, luxury goods are sold at high, so that is the one we actually wanted. But that's okay. Run the medical supplies back down. This one is far simpler. You don't have the one dead jump between Tau, Tau Katai and Enlightenment that we have to deal with otherwise. I suppose it's more of a dead landing than a dead jump, seeing as it's making an unnecessary landing in... Uh, was it Tau 2? So Eamon Flanagan. He is the leader of the Wild Geese, the Irishman faction. And uh, we may, may interact more with him later. But he has his own special hail. And special Starbridge. Cool guy, cool guy. Let's buy some luxury goods. See if he'll bankrupt us. It won't. Wonderful. We can start scaling up again after this. 
in the most um, like golden age of not privateering, shipping, like sea shipping, uh, in proper fashion, we are running these routes so we can equip our navy, quote unquote, with the latest and greatest in firepower to fight the British. Oh, wait a minute, no. Not to fight the British. The Aurorans, yes, wait, no. Pirates, just pirates. No need to be alarmed. We're scaling up again. Can't stop me now. Although I suppose I did hire a regular one instead of a used one. Foolish, foolish me. Because if the cargo is the same, why pay more? Got some marauders. I'm not going to concern myself with that. Just going to hope that none of my ships eat the dust. Beautiful. Like a Swiss watch. Alrighty. So, if I remember correctly, the railguns cost somewhere on the order of. I want to say 75,000 for the 100mm railguns. I'm going to have to check on that. And they're kind of a pain because as they're an Aurora outfit, they're not illegal in the Federation, but they're not sold. They're only sold on pirate stations or in Aurora in space. And I don't particularly feel like going down into Aurora in space at the moment. So a pirate station, quote unquote, big air quotes on pirate station, because by that I mean it's a shell, um, will have to do. I'm just gonna hang around and see if I can I can get really lucky with ah no destroyed Velos. I do kind of wish you could zoom out more in this game. Maybe that's something that a plugin creator can work on. But it'd be nice to uh, get a better broader scope of those epic space battles. Because it seems a lot of the time you actually end up playing via the minimap. Not that I'm complaining. Let's buy more luxury goods. And also replace more of our fleet. Just just ignore that stuff going on in the background. I'm sure it's nothing. Mm, 125. Just double checking. Yeah, it, it's, it's just the same thing but cheaper. Why would I hire the more expensive version? And why have I never noticed this before, that this is an option? I tell you. I tell you. What am I doing? Here we go. Moving up in the world. Got our fleet of Therapins. Terrapins? I don't know. A far cry from the heady days of... How long have we been going? Like, 58 minutes? 58 minutes ago, where our pirate viper was being terrorized by a single marauding Terrapin. Now I command the Terrapins. I am their god. Lord of Terrapins. You can say that on Twitch, right? I know you can't on YouTube, which is interesting. But hey. Interesting is my middle name. Always some interesting combat going on. We're making quite a profit, too. As you can see, you can make just quite a bit of money doing runs like this. The question is, how much do you really need? How much do you really want to invest? How much time do you want to spend uh, doing this as opposed to playing the game? But I'd argue, this is the game. Or at least a, a fundamental aspect to it, or a, a, I shouldn't say aspect because it's not required, a facet to it. It's a facet of the game, because if this is the way you want to play, it is a perfectly legitimate play style, which will uh, lead you down all sorts of interesting avenues, and if not, you can ignore it entirely. You know those leviathans we talked about earlier? There is actually special missions that you only get if you have a leviathan, because they are large freight missions, and it's just it's so thematic. It's good, you know? And it's something you'd never, never notice. 
unless you actually take the time to get into being a freighter captain. And I'm sure that people have spreadsheets and all that kind of thing to optimize routes, figure out where all the junks are sold, the uh, optimization to figure out what's the best route. Why haven't I done that? I should do that. Maybe like the best ship compositions. I tell you, this could be fun. For people who can find that kind of thing fun. As you see, we've passed a million credits. Uh, we, oops, no, I do not want to find a system. Although that is kind of a handy dandy little feature. We probably want a little bit more than a million credits. We can honestly keep doing this uh, as long as we want, but it'd be nice to get rolling, you know, get, get a move on. A million may seem like a lot, but in the grand scheme of things, it really isn't. To give you perspective, some of the kind of exclusive upgrades cost uh, 1.5 million. And if that's not kind of crazy to you, well, I guess uh, you're not easily phased. One more run, one one more little trip back to Seoul, and we'll call that we'll call that good. We'll go and outfit our pirate Valkyrie, uh, become the the weapon of righteousness that we know that we can be, and go and hunt pirates, which I promise is very exciting, riveting even. So one thing we can check is they actually sell some hard-to-find stuff here, although usually this is my location to get vectored thrust, when really I want horizontal boosters at the moment. So we're not going to worry too much. We might have to take a trip up to the Ritharian system to get those, those sweet, sweet horizontal boosters. See how everything shakes out. Oh look, Aurorans have decided to... Oh god, what what did I ever do to you? So we're gonna we're gonna try to avoid getting our face rolled by Aurorans and just just sneak in and ah death. Well, that right there is why we're not playing on hardcore mode or hardcore mode. Because if we were at the end of it. Whereas right now, I can just go into my pilot uh, folder and load us back up. And here we are in the Lean Mean Stream Machine. There we go. Evidently, um, if you do play hardcore mode, you can't do that. Your pilot just gets deleted from the folder and is gone forever. That's a little bit too, uh, too hardcore for a stream because I'm sure after watching me do this trading route for the last 20 odd minutes, you don't want me to restart and do it again. I've done it. I've done hardcore runs. Um, but they do get repetitive. Not tedious. Repetitive is the word I'm going to use. So let's release two of you and see if we can't hire the next level up just to make one or two victory runs. No, I don't think it's going to let me hire a Pegasus. Get a frigate, but they're not much bigger. Alright, this landing and re-taking re off thing is kind of sapping my profits, so. So cease that silliness. Suckering succotash. So long. Thanks for all the fish. Let's go trick out this Valkyrie. Pimp my Valkyrie. To borrow a title from a famous mid-aught show. Oh, there's that pirate jammer that I was telling you about. Another gray shoulders um, special. Let's buy one. These are 100k, not the 75k I had remembered. But hey, we are flush with that sweet, sweet uh, trading cash. And so we can more than afford it. The question is, 
how much room do we leave ourselves? I think we do that. Get a cargo retool. Or a temporary one, I should say, because I don't think we want to do too much irreparable damage to our ship with the aim of going and getting a mercenary company or uh, 12. I say 12, 3. We should, we should go get 3. Mercenaries, mercenaries, or sorry, marine platoon. Not mercenaries, marines. Is there anything we have taking up one ton? So we have kind of a weird number here. Because usually things are put in in uh, sets of five. So what's taking up one ton? Hmm. I don't know. Oh, it's not the afterburner, as I thought it might be. It's taking up one ton. Ah, no matter. What, way to go, brain. Just, yeah, sell that. No, no, let's just buy another. Second one. Another one. Okay. We're ready. Onward. To the deep, dark space. Now oh, they're fighting a roaring. That's kind of one of the uh, the sillier things about the game, is that they'll, they'll, just, they'll just go all out on a viper. Or on a phoenix, or or what have you. It's like, yeah, we'll give it all the mustard, all the muscle we have. You might be saying, Dave, what are you doing? You're attacking a pirate carrier. Yeah, I'm gonna win too. Boom. I will not have the fruits of my labor, however, just because the Federation is a pain. I might ah, bloody. No! How, how could you? How could you? Why did you do this to me? I think I've annoyed them, though, so I don't think they'll allow me to land. Yeah, I think I've annoyed them. Sometimes, uh, even if, like, they accidentally shoot you, uh, it does affect their opinion of you, which is kind of a pain. But it's usually easy enough to remedy with enough... Um, UN shipping runs, which is kind of why it's worthwhile doing the UN shipping runs, is just for the reputation. Let's blow this manticore out of the sky. What the, are you... Okay, it's not the Federation attacking me. Good. I can deal with things that aren't the Federation attacking me. Because if the, the former happens, something has gone very, very wrong. Ah, uh, too much mustard. Uh-uh, you don't get to go de-hostile and run away. Not, not how this works. You've awoken the beast! Sadly, my, uh, my railguns are a little bit too powerful. Ah, fell. So instead, we'll go after this guy. I may have to downgrade the railguns if they prove to be uh, an issue. Railguns are nice because when you're fighting Federation ships, they prefer blasters. And the big advantage of railgun over blasters is range. Your range is just so much better. That's what we call tactics. Why match them blow for blow when you can use your brain? And there we go. Like that, we have an escort. And the nice thing about the escort is if we upgrade this, we have a Class C Starbridge. A Class D Starbridge has an Ion Cannon. And Ion Cannons are wonderful because they make getting more escorts a snap. All right, we should do the right thing here. There we go. I'm a good person, or something. Alright, so the goal here is to first get this guy upgraded at Nurse Primus, and then we'll head into the deep, dark, galactic north. And there we will find our fortune. Alright, he's been upgraded. Don't believe me? Class D. 
class D. That's where things get good. One, two, three. We can go three jumps away as we have a six jump range. And up in the Galactic North, you don't have to worry about the Federation patrols messing up your day. Uh, instead, it's just this. The way it was meant to be. Me, uh, it's, oh. Spoilers. You do get the Rebellion messing with you, though. Wherever you go, you get goody two-shoes. Unless you go to a pirate system. In which case, uh, you just have way too many pirates to deal with, so... Name your poison. Mission successful. We're going to pull the same thing we did with the pirate star bridge and upgrade this guy because, as I mentioned earlier, a pirate Valkyrie class 4 has an ion cannon. And I know we haven't seen ion cannon in action yet. We will. It's pretty adept to taking down, taking down ships, which is when we're trying to make money this way, what we want. Oh, they blew it up, didn't they? That was... They killed Kenny. How could you? That is the risk, that until you land, they are at a very, very low health and shielding. Because, after all, you did just disable them. But there's the Iron Cannon in all its glory. I quite like it. I especially like it when I'm not the one who has to man it. Because it's a little bit of a... Uh, not hassle. I just I prefer not to. Lazy. Um, I will eventually be manning one, so to speak. But not at the moment. Ah, I was going to see if I can get that rebel one. They've got the nice paint job. Because in any, in any story of uh, space opera, space drama, you've got to have a rebellion. Someone to fight the power. So they actually do the war frigate pretty well. They, they have a carrier class for their frigate. Um, this is Rebel Upgrade 1. I believe there is also a discrete carrier class. And it handles pretty well. If you press F, they go off and fight things. It's great. And if we disable him, all of his minions should go away. They didn't. Uh, there they go. Now they're going away. I believe that may have cost me my companion. What a pain. The price we pay to, uh, to attack carriers is what it comes right down to. But hey, here is where we reap our reward. 500,000. And 1% capture on everyone cross your fingers! No, not today. You, however, uh, I want my revenge. Thank you. So, was it worth it? Uh, arguably not. Just because we're trying to get ships that are disabled capable, and losing one at this early juncture kind of hurts. Uh, it does illustrate why I prefer the Pirate Valkyrie Class 4 over the Pirate Starbridge D, and that is be Oh, wh what did I do to piss you off? Where was I? Oh, I'm also out of energy. Awesome. How did I not see that? Well, I would say I'd attack them. But instead, I think I'm going to open the pilot, because that... Yeah. I don't think that would go anywhere productive. I don't know why I was hostile to them. But that was, that was destined for defeat. Fighting a carrier right now. It's not not gonna happen. We might be able to do it, but it would trash our reputation in the Federation to the point where it'd make uh, proceeding with really any storyline, or at least most of them, uh, all but all but impossible. This is much more effective. Alrighty. You can see the effectiveness of, uh, what, three marine platoons. We can take pretty much any small ship with relative ease. Oh, look, what, what's this spaceport in the middle of, of Galactic North? It's the Rebel system. 
Sorry, spoilers, I suppose. But you'll find it if you just go exploring anyway. And it's also a great place to get the horizontal booster important polish, because apparently they just have access to a wider variety of equipment than the Federation does. And it's a great place to refuel a pirate hunting, so I make good use of it. And oh look, buying a map here reveals the Seychelles system with uh, the Port Harbor, which is the Federation equivalent of Kippa, that system all the way down here with the houseless port. It's pirate system, and it even says government pirate. It's almost always hostile. If you're the kind of person who really likes doing the uh, takeover planet kind of thing, when you get to like end end game, it's usually the first one people go for just because no one will miss it. We're just going to jump back and forth between these two systems because it's nice to have the spaceport for the rebels right there. As if we want to upgrade our ships, if we want to really do much of anything, we can just hop back there and we're liked by them currently because we haven't really taken a side in their little conflict. And they have a shipyard, so we can upgrade escorts there. We are going to upgrade this guy fully, do a bit of a bit of an invest. Investing in the future. Oh my god. Okay, that's why it was so fast. So this is uh, Stefan Chick. Stefan? Stefan Chick. Um, and they're gone. That's one of the Atmos developers. One of their PERS, as we call it. P-E-R. It's a developer ship. And they're always real good. Like, that That was faster than you'll ever see a, a Manticore go in the actual game. And so it's not uh, a realistic goal if you want to trick out your Manticore, unless you want to try fighting them for theirs, which is an option. And it retains all of their special properties and everything. Personally, I don't know if that one is invulnerable. Some of them are. Um, and I don't particularly want to find out right now. Later down the line? Yeah, maybe. You know, I think it's doable. Um, right now? No. Oh, I didn't buy a map. Gotta buy a map. Gotta flesh out that, that galaxy map. You can actually just get a plugin which gives you the entire map, but where's the fun in that? Ooh, look at that. It, it, the Galactic North just becomes such a uh, tangled web of systems, just uninhabited systems. Why? Gives you that big empty feel. The big galactic empty. Oh, pirate. I want him. I want him. Ah, uh, the one that got away. You can give your squad orders with the uh, FC and... There's a couple keybinds for it, but the one I used there was attack. Uh, F. Now, the thing about doing an attack is they won't try to disable. They'll just try to destroy, which for our purposes is a little bit counterintuitive as we're just trying to disable and make money that way. So, I like to try to uh, avoid doing that, but if you tell them to attack, and then tell them to return to formation afterwards with C, you can actually um, get them to cease their attack and only go for a disable. Otherwise, in C, they'll be in what's called defensive mode, where they will only attack guys who are uh, right next to you. But they will do so non lethally so... There's a fair bit of micromanagement when it comes to fleets, this is why I don't particularly like um, the so-called carrier styles, because it involves a lot of micromanagement of generally a lot of very flimsy uh, ships. So a lot of Vipers, a lot of um, Thunderheads, that kind of thing. I think the most the heaviest thing you can get is a Thunderhead, so everything kind of falls apart. I'm not going to... Two jumps left, I guess you have to go back to Nurse Primus. Nessere? Nesser? Nesser Prime? Ugh, I don't know. Yeah, no. No. Not gonna fight that one. There is another option for doing this kind of thing. And that's to go down to that rough and tumble system we talked about earlier, the Jeffron system. And land and take off from the planets there, because it has a very high rate of spawning pirates. Plus, there's somewhere to land. So if you don't like the particular spawn at that time, like right now, I don't want to fight three on one. 
you don't have to. You can just land, and that'll be that. Preferably do so before your guys get destroyed. One on three, however, I'm okay with that one. Ah, oh well. You win some, you lose some. So it goes. Were we playing hardcore? I'd have to wait around for someone to come by. But we're not. So I don't. We don't want to fight the association because the association, uh, destroying them will actually lower our reputation with the Federation as they are Federation affiliated pirates. Although when the, when the chance comes along for a type four, ah, you, how could you? Take that. We really want that, that type four Valkyrie though. That's gonna be our ship. And so any stepping stone on that way, we will take. Don't let our new acquire get trapped in that kerfuffle. More pirates, but we want that particular ship. And it can sometimes take a minute. Occasionally it's just worth hanging out in an empty system. Um, because sometimes pirates will just jump in. Not the case right now. But something to keep in mind. Ah, traitor. We could turn real pirate and attack the traitor. Oh, right when I landed. Of course. Alright, moment of truth. Oh, get lost. Alright. Lean. Or, I'm sorry, what am I doing? The lean, mean, stream, machine. Getting real silly with it. All right. Okay. Just avoid, avoid confrontation. We are so weak, but we got what we came for. So the reason we did all that, and it took not that, not that long in the grand scheme of things, is because now we have... Uh, four ion particle cannons on a tiny little ship. Everything else, whatever. Uh, it's nice to have the fixed railgun and the uh, turreted railguns. So we'll keep those, but uh, everything else will strip. Sell for scrap. We're really just doing this for the four free ion cannons. Now, uh, EV Nova in its base state does suffer from what's called the N plus one glitch in which if you have more than one copy of a gun that fires at the same time as the other copies, the damage is severely reduced, if not um, completely negated for having more than one. However, I don't know um, if I mind this enough to try to find the plugin. The plugin, I don't know where it's, I don't know where it's ended up. It's a fairly well-known one. I'm sure I could do a quick Google, but I don't particularly want to change things up right now. That's just me. So, we'll run with this. I only really need one particle cannon to be effective anyway. There is a downside of the class five, um, sorry, class four. Class four star bridge, and that's that you have a severely limited amount of space. We have, I think, total 10, car uh, 10 tons of cargo room. And that can be kind of kind of brutal when it comes to doing more interesting uh, missions. But we have a ton of outfit space, which means we can really uh, modify this guy however we want. Uh, one thing I should do before I forget, though, is I believe we still have non-class 5 ships. And as much as I usually don't, don't really pay a lot of attention to it, uh, when it comes to... The Valkyrie, at least, class 4 is so much better than base class that I think it's worth making the investment. Just check the shipyard one more time. There's a plot hook in the shipyard um, that I particularly want because it's quite good. So it gives us access to that hypergate system. 
And so that's why I keep checking back to the Seoul shipyard. Even though we're not in the market for a new ship at this point, we'll probably carry this through until we get a satisfactory um, story ship. Or if we get a particularly uninteresting storyline ship-wise, we'll just keep this the entire time. The Pirate Valkyrie is just kind of excellent. <clears throat> hmm. Could take a delivery to Earth. Or alternatively, we could keep doing what we're doing. I should probably sell the uh, Star Bridges. The Star Bridges are, are nice because they're kind of a lighter fighter than the Valkyrie. The problem is they're also uh, significantly flimsier. The Class D does have a tractor beam, sorry, ion cannon, um, but I don't know if that justifies having it just because, ah, here we go, just because uh, if they die to a carrier, what's the point? So here we go. As you wander through the shipyard, looking at all the ships, awaiting a prospective buyer, a man wearing an expensive tailored business suit comes over and extends his hand. Are you Pyre Valor, captain of the lean, mean stream machine? Ah, we've included too many thuhs. Captain of the, the lean, mean stream machine. Oh well, live and learn. He asks quietly as you shake hands. You nod, warily. Excellent, I'm Rodney Andwera. Andrews. Wow. Okay, I can't see. I've been staring at the screen too long. Too too fine a print for my poor eyes. Manager of shipping. Uh, manager of shipping liaison. Shouldn't it be I'm the shipping liaison, or liaisons? Ah, it's French. I, I was never much good at French. For Sigma shipyards, ever since Donald Chick disappeared some months ago, we've had a problem gaining the services of freighter pilots to bring in our supplies. Would you be willing to work for us? Of course, sure. Great, he exclaims with a wide smile. We currently have a shipment of 10 tons of equipment waiting in storage on Colon in the Sandown system. If you could head over there, pick it up, and return here, uh, making sure to land on the areas of the Cane Band owned by Sigma Shipyards, that would be great. Any problems? He asks seriously. No? Well then, I expect we'll be seeing you again in a few weeks. A few weeks? Try like two days. The Sandown system is adjacent. Um... What's interesting is Sigma Shipyards is super prevalent in the Evinova universe. So the shuttle we started with is actually considered to be a Sigma Shipyards Alpha class shuttle. Sigma Shipyards does all of the, um, I should say, the vast majority of the shipyard work on Earth here. We'll read the blurb about them in a minute. But I just want to point out, that's a, a manticore there trying to ion cannon a shuttle. That's just the fate of these, of these poor, poor shuttles. Yes, as it says right here in the blurb, there is no greater shipyards anywhere in known space. In fact, Sigma Shipyard actually owns 62% of the band surface. The moon has taken a back seat and has been strip mined for centuries. So the important thing there is that Sigma Shipyard's big deal. Alrighty. So, oh, I'm sorry. It's not adjacent. It's two away. I, I don't think we can make it. But it does give me a chance to note how long it takes to go from system to system. So March 7th. Okay, two days. So we're kind of in the mean. Oh, nine Kaniki. No. Instead. Kalan. Fair enough. Oh, you want a taste? You want a taste? He got a taste, bros. Boys. You mess with the mess with the bull, you get the horns. Silliness aside, uh, that's just kind of what happens when you have uh, a ton of... I'm sorry, I'm trying to figure out what button I have bound to do the ion cannon, or to select my secondary weapon, rather. I didn't sell it, did I? I didn't do a really silly thing there. No, I still have more... Okay. Is it automatic? I think that's it. I think it is automatic. Yeah, it's automatic. Pro tip, don't just attack random ships. They don't like that. 
It was for uh, rigorous testing purposes only, I assure you. Hmm. As you pile your way into what's normally a restricted area, out of bounds to all non-Sigma Shipyards personnel, you take a quick, quick peek at some of the enormous shipyards at their disposal. As soon as you land, dock workers swarm all over your vessel, and in no time, they have unloaded your cargo. A few minutes later, as you stand around wondering what to do, you spot Rodney coming towards you. Sorry, I'm a little tardy, he apologizes sincerely. I've just been having one of those days today. Now that I've finally arrived, here are the details I'm sure you're dying to know. Ready for this? Oh, look at that! The text windows have graphics sometimes. Very exciting. Firstly, Rodney ticks off a finger. You've been paid 20,000 credits for your services, and I've also made available similar missions through the Mission BBS throughout the Federation. Secondly, as an employee of Sigma Shipyards, you are allowed to purchase all the ships in our range. He informs you to your delight. In particular, I'm talking about the Starliner, the Pegasus, and the Leviathan. If you can scrape together the funds, you can purchase them from here at any time. You should also be able to find a few ship upgrade outfits here on the Cane Band. Anyway, if you'll forgive me, he finishes a little tiredly. I have a thousand and one things I still have to do today, so I'll take my leave of you. Thanks again. So there we go. Sigma Shipyards is an excellent plotline because it unlocks things like this. This 12 million credit ship. Oof. 4,000 ton cargo. Imagine the, the routes you can do in this baby. It's pretty great. The Starliner is like the, the luxury passenger ship. So if we look at the mission PPS, there's these ferry passenger missions, which they only give you 5,000 credits. So oftentimes not really worth doing. If you have the Starliner, and if I'm remembering correctly, you get special ones that reward uh, far more credits, and it's just kind of an interesting flavor thing. It does count as a capital ship, though, so you need a special license. Now, the outfits. If you're souping up a ship, you've got to use the Sigma Shipyard's um, modifications, just because they're that good. They, are, they have no mass, except for one of them, which is a mass exchange on an enormous scale. And they just make your ship strictly better. This, the electrical re rewiring gives you more maneuverability, more shields, and I want to say um, better sensors. But it's always worth getting. Uh, to compensate for this, they are pretty expensive. You know, uh, The cheapest one is half a million. Most of them are a million. All right. So now we go ransack some pirate uh, heavy ships and uh, try to scrape together the funds to get all of those that we want. I've also left an adequate amount of room open to experiment with uh, with outfits for the Valkyrie because we've pretty much uh, put in all the ones we want to actually take up space. I think we still need a pirate jammer because I think the other one was still in the old one, but uh, for the time being we're doing pretty well. We also load up on carbon fiber, which is uh, just increases the hull strength. It's never bad, just, you know, it's, it's bog standard. Let's see what's going on in the missions. We don't need no missions. Well, you just use double negatives, so you might need an education. At you, Pink Floyd. Because where we're going, we're going marauding. Uh, unfortunately, oh, I spoke too soon. There is marauding to be had here. Kalu Kalei. I mean, they're going to be instantly destroyed by the carrier, but at the very least, it will increase our combat rating. So you see, we have a combat status of fair ability. That will actually uh, gate certain missions. Like I mentioned earlier, there's a bounty hunter mission. You have to have a certain combat aptitude to qualify. So watch this, boot. Be real quiet. I'm hunting wabbits. Get them. Very satisfying. Just sneaking up on them. Give them the old one-two. By one-two, I mean hit him with ion cannons. Ah, yes. I lost all my marines. Perhaps I should go get more. 
or I can just uh, stay a while here and do some looting with the intention of one day getting the Sigma Shipyards upgrades when I go to get the uh, the Marine Platoons. Set phasers to kill. Oof. That could have gone better. That was a misclick. But we won. That's all that matters. So now we wait for someone to jump into the system, or I'll just reload the pilot. But uh, we haven't lost anything, so I don't think there's much of an issue with... Ah, hello! I'm sure I had nothing to do with the other one exploding. About it. Help me. 20,000? Uh, fine. The price we pay. If only you were a UN ship, then I wouldn't have to pay anything. The Federation destroyers are just kind of like that. They're uh, a little bit ornery. On the plus side, we went from fair ability to good ability. Just had to take down one carrier. Nothing interesting here. Nothing interesting here. Ah, uh, this is what I like. Because he might, might, nah, I was going to say, sometimes they're able to take down the gunboats. In which case, I can board both the gunboat and the, uh, the manticore to get a little two for one. Don't you dare. It's mine. Oh, get lost. Ah. You're lucky I don't blow you up. I don't think I couldn't. After all, I have the squad assembled. Can't take carriers, though. I think that would be something fun to do sometime. And do, like, a legitimate pirate. And actually try to uh, take down Federation ships. The issue with that becomes uh, you can't land anywhere, and I don't think it actually increases your reputation with uh, the pirate systems, so you end up just being in no man's land, which is not as fun as it seems. Ah, too much. Too much mustard. Ah, well. So that's the issue with having the turreted railguns that we didn't bother taking off. Ooh, carrier fight. Is that, um... Who's gonna win? Who's gonna win? Is that you'll inadvertently destroy people who you meant to just try to capture with your IN beam. Don't hurt the merchandise. Half a million credits. Thank you very much. Also, uh, it's debatable whether or not it's worth capturing these pirate vipers. Because um, since they're from a carrier, all you can do is try to capture them. And they only sell for like... 14,000? It's almost not worth it. And you have to go out of system to go sell them? I don't know. Well, really what I should do is I should go get those um, those marines because it's it, it kind of hurts missing out on the cell chance but ooh baby you can get around the M plus one glitch if you just have a bunch of ships doing it for you because it's only like intership if that makes sense alrighty so we've got 2k or, sorry 2 million um, so what we could do now, if we wanted to, is go get those upgrades, but I'd rather keep marauding for a little while longer, or counter-marauding as the case may be. 
Ah, Federation. I tell you, it's never fun when the gunboats show up. We'll see who wins this one. It's honestly a toss-up. Well, yes, I will give you a lift. Okay, you're both class four. Um, so I honestly want to take both of you. But it is not to be, I'm afraid. But we've got some passengers, so we can eventually, I suppose, if we have to, go drop them off somewhere. The nice thing about the association is they may be allied with the Federation, but they won't blow up your uh, your disables because they want them for their uh, their own. They'll they'll come and try to snag them from you, which, seeing as they're mostly uh, heavier ships, they have kind of a hard time doing, which is fine by me because it means that they're less likely to be successful in that endeavor. Oh my, it's already ten o'clock. I'm playing too much EV Nova. A common occurrence. They want to go to Haven. That one. This would be a great time to just turn the stream off and figure out that it hasn't been properly recording audio this entire time. Something silly like that. It would be uh, oof, quite a feeling. Quite, quite a, as the kids say, mood? Question mark? Question mark? Exclamation point? Uh, swag. Any questions? I swear I'm hip with the times, I'm down with the slang, I'm groovy. Help me. So those marines. Electrical rewiring, our ship is as sprightly and nimble as ever. Did we ever get the horizontal booster? I think I have to check. Do, 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 do. Magnetic center, either Port and polish, vector thrush. Uh, I don't see it, which would imply that we did not. I'll have to go get one. Ooh, nor do we get a pirate jammer. Uh, I don't actually care, though. So the jammers are nice if you are very afraid of missiles. I'm not afraid of missiles. But the sensor boost, well, those are always worthwhile. Sensor boosts are just good to have. Alrighty. Alrighty, righty, alrighty. Hard earned cash spent. So we are going to go back up to Korea. I don't know why the rebel um, base is called Korea, but it is. So we're going to go back up to Korea and see if they have the horizontal thrusters. Horizontal boost. Our turn radius. It's very good. Look at that. Turns on a dime. Ooh. That's nice when one of them just wanders in. I'll take the credits because I don't particularly want the ship, but I'll take the ship if I must. If that is to be my burden to bear. Better than the rebels just blowing it out of the sky. And land. Do you have horizontal booster? There we go. Fantastic. We have all of the miscellaneous wander around the entire galaxy looking for it upgrades. We need to find a shorter name. And now we get to concern ourselves exclusively with raising the funds for those uh, Sigma Shipyards upgrades. Ooh. My favorite. My favorite because they're much more robust. I'll be having that, thanks. I think it's time to sell the star bridges because they're not uh, actually keep that one for now. Sell that one. So 
So we're keeping the type D, we're keep, and uh, we're selling the rest. The logic there being, we've already invested the money in upgrading the type D to have the ion cannon. We don't need it uh, on the, or we don't need the other two because they don't have it. They're just, they're just uh, blockade runners, so to speak. Ah, we do need to upgrade you though. It's 100% worth it. Got to say, investment in the future and all that. Which one is it? It's you. Upgrade you again. And that'll be the last of our spending for the time being. Because now we have another ion cannon to add to the fray. I'm going to hit the derelict just because if it's a trap, then we get the advantage of having pirate fodder. We d it is a trap. Excellent. Give me them pirates. Okay, none of the ships that I actually want, so I'm just going to let them have at it. And they just, they just destroy them. Like, these ships are good. <laughs> I know I use them as uh, essentially just portable ion cannons but they are equipped with uh, Hellhound missiles. And I believe the Starbridge actually has EMP torpedoes. So they're no, they're no slouch. And one nice thing about having a escort with an illegal weapon like an EMP torpedo is it does not trip Federation alarms. They don't care if, you're, uh, if your escort has it, they only care if you have it. Which to me seems a little bit, a little bit confusing, a little bit uh, on the nose there. But hey, I don't make the rules. I could if I wanted to go in and mod the game, but I don't. Isn't that beautiful? I tell you. Pirate King right here. A little bit of extra dosh just by happening upon him. Get to sell him. Hey, it's uh, Jason Cook. Ah, he's gone. Another Persona ship. <laughs> Wandering around the Galactic North. Truth be told, we, we don't really need to do this at the moment. What we really need to do is keep pushing that Sigma Shipyard storyline until they allow us access to the ever-elusive Hypergate system. Because then we can uh, really start to zip around. Ooh, free trader. Too late now, but could have been something there. You can't cancel a jump when you start it. So always be prepared. Got the mass edition. This is the cheapest one, uh, the one that costs half a million. Just adds, I believe, five tons of extra space. And hey, five tons is five tons, but I d oh dear. Hmm. So this is the wild geese storyline, and we're going to do it. I'm going to read this, and we're going to do it, but I think we're going to save that for the next stream to actually, you know, take him where he wants to go and, and do uh, his little mission. This is why I usually avoid going to the bar in Seoul, because I don't want to trigger this until I actually want to do it. But uh, hey, here we are. So, without further ado, the wild geese. You have barely entered the bar when you're knocked backwards by the flying body of one of the bar's patrons. A burly individual knocks you to the ground, and as soon as you uh, start to give the offending ruffian a piece of your mind, if not a piece of your boot, you notice that the man was sent flying your way by a red-headed giant fighting on the far side of the bar. As you watch, a number of men attack him, only to be beaten back by his uh, prodigious strength. A man comes at him from behind, smashing a bar stool over his head. He staggers and begins to stumble, his sneaky attacker beginning to draw a knife, and you feel as if you should help the man before he is stabbed in the ba uh, back in a cowardly attack. You quickly jump into action, smashing your fist into the other man's face. He falls backwards as your fist comes away stained with blood. The giant shakes his head and with a roar launches himself at the remaining ruffians. 
as you watch the fight end in a quick and brutal fury of blows. Oh, I see the fight ends. In a matter of seconds, the floor is strewn with unconscious bodies. The man turns to you and offers his huge hand. I'm not going to do the Irish accent. It's, it's going to be bad, and it's just going to come across as offensive. Thanks for your help, he says in a thick tongue. Can I get you a drink? You nod your assent, and he turns to a dazed-looking barman and orders two drinks. You make a mental note not to drink docks, not to drink in dockside bars anymore, and turn your attention to the man beside you. He stands about six and a half feet tall, and looks as if he could pull apart leviathans with his bare hands. He has, has a uh, shock of bright red, bright carrot. Bleh, I'm sorry, has a shock of bright red carrot-colored hair and very pale skin. He turns to you and hands you a huge drink, as black as pitch and as thick as fresh cream. Sounds good. He raises his glass to you in a silent salute, and then takes a long pull off his drink. You follow suit, and you're surprised uh, by the thick, bitter taste that fills your mouth. It is at once revolting and enticing, and you don't quite know what to make of it. You guess that you should be polite and finish it, but you don't know if you'll be able. Many hours later, and you and your new friend, uh... Micheline, Micheline Hughes, Hugh, Hogue, Hogue, I'm going to go with Hogue, Micheline Hogue, stagger from the bar, the manager slams the door behind you and looks at, <laughs> and locks it quickly, and you get the distinct impression that he was not happy that the two loudest patrons were also the last to leave, you head back towards the docks while Micheline courses loud, curses loudly, you follow his gaze as best you can, and you see a heavily modified thunderhead being locked down by the port authorities. Mickling shouts abuses at them in a, a strange tongue, but it makes a little difference. Before they leave, they give him a notice um, to the effect that he has outstanding storage debts, and that his ship was impounded until he pays them back. Oof. What a pain. Ah, uh, but that would have to... But that would have to be... But that would have to be the life of a wild rover. I'm not sure I know the expression. He sighs wistfully, waving an unsteady hand at his locked ship. I spent all me money... Oh, come on, guys. I spent all my money on whiskeys and beer. And now I have none to get my ship out of out of hook. I, I, I don't want to do the accent. It's not going to It's not gonna come across well. He slumps down next to the ship and puts his hand head in his hands. Your heart goes out to him, and you ask if there's any way that you can help him. He explains that he has to be in New Ireland in the Toothless system before the end of the month, so he can be the best man at his cousin's nuptials. He says that if you can give him a lift, you can stay for the wedding and the party after. Apparently, one is uh, very serious, and the other involves a white dress. Oh, haha. Ha. Uh, you've had far too many pints, in air quotes, to figure out which is which. Do you give him a lift? Of course we do. Sounds like a fun time. You awake in the morning with a heavy head, and there is far too much light in the cabin. The instruments are too bright, and you can't remember ever falling, feeling quite so awful. Mickleen doesn't appear to be much better, but takes a very philosophical view of your predicament. Just remember, they can, <laughs> you can only start to feel better when you feel this bad at the beginning, he tells you with grim humor. Somehow it makes sense in a bizarre way. All right. Well, I don't know if we're going to do Mickalene's thing right now, just because it's uh, it's a long one, and I don't know if my throat can take it. It's a lot, it's a lot of reading. I'm going to press the cough button here for a minute. Pardon me. Um, and so we're going to save that for next stream, I think. I think we're going to call it quits around the two hour marks we've got seven more minutes let's do some more quick rating and we'll uh we'll call it after that so we're gonna know with the tulsa system tutha taltha i have no idea and uh we'll head back to good old jeff john jeff on i i don't know I assume it's Jafon, but it just sounds a little bit silly if you ask me. Zap. I tell you, tractor beams are that good, and they can't fight back when they're entering hyperspace. I'll take your credits, 
and not much else because I tripped the emergency self-destruct mechanism. Alrighty. Uh, nothing of interest. Don't feel like fighting a carrier for my kill. Here we go. This seems like a bad idea. Let's do it. I think we can dogpile this guy before. Ooh, he might get away. Nope, no one gets away. No one gets away from the infamous dread pirate of uh, Lean Mean Stream Machine. Don't be ridiculous. Well on our way. Well on our way. Nope. That's two carriers. I tell you, the Federation really need to leave this system alone. I've got, uh, got pirating to do, after all. Ooh, this is the heavy weapons version. Didn't save them, but, you know, those those EMP torpedoes are no joke. I'm not sure what's over there, but I'm sure I'm going to have to fight it. Oh, it's just an Enterprise. A modified Aurora ship. Of little consequence to people as proficient as us. Oh, hey, a Viper. Let's capture that and use it as our ship. Said no one ever. Escort. And even then, um... I don't think we're gonna be. Don't think we're gonna be keeping it. Because that's about how well they fare. More pirates. Uh, no. Oh, there's David Dunham. Hello, David Dunham. I don't know, dang it. Contact the author of the plugin. Yeah, I feel you there. I believe he was in some sort of uh, support capacity, and so his frustration is understandable. In any game as heavily modded as this, you have issues with the plugin, and so, well, the people who made the game are, are only of, of limited help when it comes to being able to remedy your issue. Let's see how he fights. I don't think his ship is at all special, but I could be. Oh wait, no, no, it has a uh, it has a manta beam. It's not going to save him. Um, we could just jump him. But the issue with fighting the staff personas is later on they will come back to to haunt you if you do. Iru, it's a nice name. A reference I am sure I don't know. Can I sneak it? It'll be the highlight of my career if I can. Actually, strike that. That'd be a pretty depressing highlight worth the case. Uh, free trader. Ah, I tell you, it hurts being too good at your job. Also, I believe we may have uh, the maximum number of escorts. So I'm just going to tell this guy to hit the road. Because I don't really need a viper. Ooh, carrier fight, carrier fight. Whoop, whoop. Love a good carrier fight. I wonder who will win. I mean, let's be honest. Uh, whoever wins, I win, because I get to pick over the bones. The bones of this little carrier fight. Looks like it's going to be the pirate, which means I definitely win. Ah, dang. Looks like the Federation carrier self-destruct. Oh, don't you dare. You, you, my spoils. I ill got those gains. <clears throat> Mickelene is going to be learning a lot of things about us that I don't think he may have bargained for when he just asked us for a ride outside the outside the uh, the pub after a couple too many pints. Lesson in life, right there. Beggars can't be choosers. I don't know why all of my ships just decided to be effective. Um, randomly. It's like, oh, we woke up. The boss wants something. Oh, well. Almost there. Almost to the amount we need for the goodies. That good good, as a friend of mine would say. A strange, strange man indeed. We are now competent to combat rating. No longer good ability or fair ability. Competent.
Oh, yeah. Yeah. Who, who's going to win? The battleship? Okay. Ah, uh, yes. Another chance to eat a carrier. Unless they lose the gunboat, which would be very disappointing. Ah, they lost. Oh, well. I tell you. Can't win them all. You are an original version Manticore. I expect you can hold your own against one measly gunboat. Whoa, what are you doing, Mr. Free Trader? Don't destroy that. You can... What a fool. What a, what a fool's a fool. Didn't even know you could board that? The Federation has nice stuff. Not to mention they, they at least have a couple credits. Now, I don't really want to uh, cheese off the Federation too much by taking their Vipers. I'm going to leave them be. Alright. It's a wonderful thing about uh, Jafon. It seems to attract a lot of like heavy uh, class... Sorry, a lot of heavy class uh, pirates for some reason. I don't know why. And so I get to eat well. He's a pirate hunter. Ah, okay. So, this is interesting. Yeah, I was about to say, there's no way that the uh, the Federation cruiser should win. Sorry, not cruiser. Um, Federation gunboat should win there, just because those are two pretty beefy ships. I'd actually say that the, uh, the Leviathans, sorry, the, the, the Valkyrie is more formidable than the Mascor. All right. As promised, we've reached the two-hour mark, and so I think we're going to be calling it. Let's just take a quick jaunt back to Seoul, get those upgrades, and then we'll, we'll call it a day. And, uh, you know, if all goes well, we'll come back and make a go at our Wild Geese storyline, which has a lot of random chance involved in terms of how well it will go. So, hey, fun. So let's see. We want the engine tune-up, and we want two mass expansions. So that should actually do it in terms of uh, things we want from engine tune-up, electrical rewiring. I think there's one more, but those are those are the big ones. Those are the good ones. Let's use one of them to get an afterburner. You never know when an afterburner is going to save your life. Uh, there we go. All right, and that's enough of that for now. If left my own devices, I'll probably play this all night. But thank you very much for joining me, or more likely watching this in its, uh, what do the kids call it, vlog format, VOD, I, I don't know. But I do know one thing, that until next time, have a good one.